the the difference between uh you know the the USSR like a, a modern day Stalinist for example is very different than a modern day communist. If you were a modern day communist and you were marching in the streets bearing uh, you know Soviet iconography or whatever it is, most likely you're someone who's going to be advocating for uh, a moneyless, classless, stateless society. Right? You're not someone who's advocating for the glory and return of Stalinism. That's the the two are often conflated, but they shouldn't be. And this is one of the reasons that there's all this strange, uh, tanky discourse online and all this idea because a very small minority of people, terminally online people, have tried uh, their best to let's just say vilify the the idea of being a modern day communist, for example. Okay, this one is definitely for the terminally online. No question about that. Uh, to understand the things that are about to transpire, you have to realize how how online you are. Anyways, uh, Riley, Gay, uh, Riley Grace Rashong, she posted um, this uh, mini manifesto, and it's basically a very long proclamation about uh, Destiny and Vosh, um, signed. I, I don't know why it required a signature at, at the very bottom. I mean, this isn't this isn't exactly a, a mortgage. Uh, you know, it's not a contract. You don't need it to be, don't need it to be notated by a public notary. But anyways, it uh, it basically talks about how Destiny is primarily motivated by a desire to prevent the spread of misinformation and consistently applies his principles that he's come to. This means that while he can acknowledge the intentions of the people he engages with, he tends to be more focused on the merits of the argument that people present. This is generally how I engage with political discussion. Uh, the one limitation to this approach is that it can often lead to conflict with people who generally have good intentions, but are not able to substantiate their arguments, aka left-leaning content creators. So the left, uh, we have good intentions, but as everyone knows, uh, you know, you can't live on good intentions, Marge, is, is kind of kind of the story. Um, and so this comes to head, obviously, with the Vosh v. Destiny stuff where Vosh is primarily motivated by a desire to expose conservatives who are acting in bad faith and engage in public discourse. This means whereas Destiny would respond to bad faith actors focusing on the merits of their argument, Vosh responds by focusing on what he perceives their intentions are. Uh, and, go, and goes on to speak that Vosh is often concerned with rhetoric uh, and uh, more convincing argument style, shall we say. Uh, anyways, uh, I was watching a little bit of Vosh yesterday and him and Booksmart started talking about this. I can quickly say this, by the way. Um... I haven't had too many direct interactions with Booksmarts. Uh, the first one I had was where I had a debate with Destiny, and Booksmarts was the moderator. I think that was the Kenosha debate that me and Destiny had, and about personal property. Uh, and he was actually very pleasant. He's very soft-spoken. It's kind of just like calming, soothing. I can understand his appeal in that regard. Uh, he then got really upset, obviously, with my debate with Lycan, uh, and thought that I was uh, rather mean-spirited, but also did like a seven-hour uh, breakdown of that debate, uh, and, and basically was saying that uh, I'm often like a, a whack-a-mole in that uh, if someone is uh, destroying one of my arguments, then other ones will pop up to replace them kind of strategy. Um, and... Uh, also, I will give uh, Booksmart's credit. He seems to be really good at uh, trying to call out Destiny on a regular basis on his, basically, his blinders when it comes to how he engages with the left. Because how he engages with the left is oftentimes, uh, you know, uh, they might be, uh, let's just say, well, I'll let, I'll let their conversation speak for themselves. I have a positive conversation with you because I actually do enjoy your content. I'd, I'd like to believe that I can get along with people. Um, when I enjoy their content. It's generally a good feeling to feel that way. Um, at some point soon, since we're, honest to God, coming up on two hours here, I should probably actually explain to my audience what the fuck is going on in this video game that I'm playing. Um, did you have anything else on your mind? Um, I think just one more thing. Um, have you seen RGR's tweet that kind of explains the difference in your approach to Steven's approach? Yeah, so I I'll need to respond to her on that. Uh, yes, I've seen that tweet. And um, do you have any like abbreviated opinions on that? I respectfully disagree. My principal criticism of Destiny is that he is not interested in finding the truth when it comes to interacting with lefties. I think he's incredibly hateful towards them, and it makes him say incredibly stupid stuff. So the, the dichotomy that was laid out by RGR honestly felt to me like a very nice version of like, men and women aren't better or worse than each other. Men are logical and women are emotional. You know, that's... That's kind of how it felt a little bit to me. Like, oh yeah, Vosh is like the emotional one, which I reject that criticism. I think that I do uh, an admirable job of trying to assess the truth of the situation. And I think that 
Destiny. I um I know I've I've reviewed I think a handful of Vosh's uh, I don't know debates or interviews recently and and typically it's been because I've been a little bit juxtaposed to his opinion on things uh, like the Kyle Kalinsky um, and uh, Crystal Ball segment that he had done uh, whereas this one uh, I'm coming uh, from a place of I I think he's completely correct I I agree with this take I agree with this assertion I think it is completely on point. And uh, very, very well presented. And he does so when he's not dealing with lefties. You know, that's pretty much the main criticism that I have. I would have to reread the post to fully remember, like, the broader premises. But that's my feeling. In, in short, yeah. I have been sexist against. I have been the victim of sexism. That's my take. Okay. Okay. Because, like, um, I wonder if, like, her thing about intentionality and you caring about that, is it all coming from the super erogatory talk that you had with Steven? Because it seemed like during that time, the reason why you didn't want to levy a lot of uh, criticisms against your fellow leftist content creators is because their hearts are in the right place and they're pushing an ideology that is ultimately going to be, like, beneficial to the world in a way that you can, like, really see and understand. And so you don't want to, like, you know... Um the entirety of the idea that like destiny is consistently looking for the truth in his assertions and that that's what he's trying to um you know get to the root of or get to the bottom of um no one criticizes the left i think more than the left i mean it's it's a whole meme you've you've seen it before right you, you you've seen you, you've seen the lobsters like the noble lobsters as as they battle each other I mean, the left, the left loves cannibalizing the left. I, I would say consistently, you will see leftists criticizing leftist takes on a regular basis. Now, maybe the difference is that there isn't this, like, summation where I will, like, condemn the entirety of another person's, like, work uh, based on what I consider to be a shitty take, right? Like, when there's a shitty take, uh, usually we're going to explore it. I'm going to talk about it and vice versa. The same thing is done to me all the time. I, I can log on to Twitch at any given time and there will be someone like watching one of my videos and being like, well, Lance is just dead wrong here. He's dead wrong. Here's why. And then ideally, I mean, when it's done in good faith, the whole idea is that people will be able to interact with each other. We're going to be able to grow from these experiences. We're going to be able to learn. But I don't think it's a fair critique to say that um, leftists... Uh, on a regular basis, just defend leftists because we're friends, or we just defend leftists because we're fighting ideologically down the same pathway, right? Like, I think it's fair to say the left critiques the left, critiques the left, critiques the left. Like, you've all seen that Venn diagram where it's those circles, and it's like, here's where everyone joins, and, like, the one thing that unites liberals, conservatives, and leftists is they all hate leftists. That's, like, that's the one, that's the one thing. Why Riley feels those things? And I also understand, I guess, the um, the underlying drive to um, to express the dynamic in that in that binary or in that um, in that duality. Like I, I get the underlying logic behind this. It's just my my central criticism kind of deviates from it in that way. Um, in terms of like the extent to which intentionality applies here, I just um, fr from a utilitarian perspective, intentionality shouldn't matter as much as it does to other like for a virtue ethicist intentionality is like key almost because you're trying to assess a person's individual proclivity towards doing good as opposed to like the consequences of the action a person engages in intention can be good when assessing future behavior but in terms of like a specific action or whatever i just don't know if i really if it necessarily means as much when it comes to like total sidebar i absolutely love this game by the way if you if you haven't played the binding of isaac you should uh, it's really, really hard. It'll probably frustrate you, but on your like 50th playthrough, you'll start to suddenly become good at it, and all of a sudden it becomes infinitely addictive. Oh, System 420, thank you very much. Appreciate it. 17 months. Well, I gotta add some new, gotta add some new icons. Criticizing other content creators, for me, it's just a practical matter of maximizing good behavior in other people. And, um, Often being super duper mean to them doesn't do that. And I reject the idea that that's what Destiny was trying to do. And it seems you agree with me that that's not what he was trying to do. So no point in, I guess, hammering on that too hard. Um, yeah, to be good faith to Riley, to though. Say. Oh, no, go ahead. No, no, please. Uh, my, my brain is failing me here. Please uh, supplement my thoughts. Sure. Um, like, I, I think that um, 
Riley, if I could just speak for her, I don't know, uh, like give a guess, would say that like Destiny's hatred for the lefties is born out of a frustration with their constant inability to meet his requirements in terms of like uh, making arguments that make sense or making arguments that hold up in all contexts or really sticking to that logical base. Dakitron 2000, thank you. I appreciate it. Lance, you demand and can convince me otherwise. I'll try. I'll try my best. So if he constantly sees issues with them, that's why he's hating on them, and that's why he's developed this bias. Although I would admit that the bias is super problematic, and I bring it up to him every time I talk with him because it's like one of the most obvious things that he could change to improve, but I'm worried at this point that might be part of his brand. Like, he can't exit that anymore. The only thing that I'd cite here is a reminder that, and this is all on public record, for a solid year and a half of my channel, I consistently said... Destiny is justified being super anti-left here because after that Peter Coffin conversation, the conversation with uh, with American Johnson, with all these other lefties he've argued with who have been just as fucking stupid as the conservatives before them, I wouldn't be surprised that he would hate lefties either. So well, I think, honestly, part of Destiny's brand is that he has kind of um, created this image of the hyper-rationalist, right? Like someone who is constantly going to try and get to the root of any one issue and, and find the truth therein. But I think there's no question that he's been completely uh, emotionally compromised when it comes to dealing with leftists. Now, maybe... Hey, Mr. Frankum, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, maybe... There is some truth to that, that his interactions with lefties, uh, certain lefties, we'll say, whether it's uh, Peter Coffin and when he had a conversation with them, of which I had nothing to do with. I'm not involved in that scenario at all. Um, or or Caleb Maupin for, is another great example of people that he had talked to uh, that just come across sometimes. Or, or who was the name of that politician that just got absolutely wrecked by him and Mel? Uh, and like a handful of other people on that panel. Joshua Collins. Yeah, Joshua for Congress. Um, like in the case of someone like Joshua for Congress, right? That's where I think there's a lot of utility in calling someone like that out. Because when it comes down to like what do you actually believe if your policies don't go, go very well beyond abolish the CIA, then yes, that, that is a huge problem. You shouldn't have uh, a monstrously huge network where you're advocating for a bunch of leftist principles and you don't know how to back up any of your claims, right? Like if that's the entirety and summation of your beliefs, abolish the CIA. And that I'm being reductive, obviously. But if that is if that is honestly where you're coming at this from, then yes, that should be called out. Um, but for a large part in what I've seen in terms of like Destiny's callouts and even my interactions with him, like I have to in my opinion, do so much more work to like back up my claims and be like, well, this isn't true. And here's the evidence to the contrary. Whereas like, I feel at times that, and this is me being incredibly, incredibly generous, that he is allowed to just make statements. He's allowed to just put things out there, right? So I, I, I submit to the evidence, my complete amicability to that position, but event that can only take you so far. And eventually like you're, you're, you're at the point where the, the arguments that you're making start to sound indistinguishable from conservative ones in some cases. Um, uh, one of the things he used to say, I'm trying not to bring this back to it, but like this is just what is on my mind, is that he's not like principally Yeah, that would be a good example, Jimmy. ...to capitalism. It's just... But like another example would be the call out uh, in relation to World War II. Uh, I can't remember, like I, I don't like... I don't like bringing up tweets where I don't have the tweet in front of me, and he's, I think, subsequently deleted it. But when he was calling out my um, call out on IBM's complicity in the Holocaust and saying that, like, wow, you're going to hate to learn about the pact that was signed between uh, Russia uh, and the Nazis, because at the end of the day, the USSR actually collaborated with the Nazis. Um, but then just to put that out there as, like, this is the factual statement, that's all there is to it, without trying to express some more of the history behind it. Like, for example, that pact, which, yes, was signed, and I'm no defender of the USSR, but that was signed after the USSR had effectively been reaching out to the Allies for a while, asking, please, can we collaborate? Because I know we're suddenly receiving this kind of pressure, and we're going to have to do a non-aggression pact eventually with one of these parties. And it seems like the power of Germany is rising, and so at this time, we're going to reach out to the Allies. They had reached out numerous times to the Allies, and they were met with uh, either... Uh, very half-assed attempts. They would meet with, like, uh, what is it, dignitaries who were, like, third down the branch line, or they would just be outright rejected and or uh, ignored. 
So that was one of the things behind. Now, I'm not saying that in any way, please, justifies then signing a non-aggressive pact with the Nazis. That's not what I'm saying. But there is more to it than simply making a statement, well, USSR aligned with the Nazis, and that's it. And that's the end of this history lesson. Whereas the USSR, as we're kind of exploring more in modern times, uh, was the ones who effectively defeated the Nazis. Uh, and it's not just that they had the highest body count, which they did. They had a monstrously high body count. But I'm talking about they actually were the ones who set foot into Germany. And, and like you've all seen that iconic picture with the waving the communist flag above them. That's not to say that the Allies did not have a crucial role to play, did not help support um, you know, the, the, the efforts that were done, the, like, I don't want to downplay any of that. I'm not trying to say, like, you know, we marched in the battles of Normandy or anything like that. That's all incredibly important. But to then say that, like, Russia at one point signed a non-aggression pact with the Nazis, and, and so that's the end of it all. And then more people pointed out that, you know, the, the Americans were very quick to then take ex-Nazi scientists, uh, as well as numerous other people who had worked within the organization, and then use them as part of a pipeline to try try and build uh, technology and weaponry using the vast things that they had discovered. That is also true, right? That's not a saying that the U.S. necessarily uh, directly partnered with Nazi Germany after Nazi Germany itself did not exist, but there was a pipeline afterwards that was introduced. These are, these are things that have to be uh, explained in detail. The solution that he thinks is best, but recently he said that he thinks anyone advocating for socialism is indistinguishable for advocating for neo-Nazis. And seeing as how socialism is pretty much the alternative to capitalism. I don't know how many economic frameworks there are available out there, but it seems to me like if you're criticizing capitalism, that's that's usually where that comes from, unless you're talking fascism. So it seems... This is good. This like these are these are all very good salient points being made. I, I, I'm saying this because I'm oftentimes when I bring on uh, Vosh clips, I usually bring them on as, as like, okay, I, I want to critique this take or I want to do this. But like this was when I watched this, I was like, these are these are very well, uh, well illustrated points. And I think that was a very strange uh, arc that Destiny went down when he was basically saying that the two are comparable, that we should be treating anyone who advocates for communism in the modern age to be the same as people who advocated for uh, Nazism. Like the, the difference between uh, you know, the the USSR, like a, a modern day Stalinist, for example, is very different than a modern day communist. If you were a modern day communist and you were marching in the streets bearing, uh, you know, Soviet iconography or whatever it is, most likely you're someone who's going to be advocating for uh, a moneyless, classless, stateless society, right? You're not someone who's advocating for the glory and return of Stalinism. That's the, the two are often conflated, but they shouldn't be. And this is one of the reasons that there's all this strange, uh, tanky discourse online and all this idea, because a very small minority of people, terminally online people, have tried uh, their best to, let's just say, vilify the, the idea of being a modern day communist, for example. But if you're a low KC, as they have to say, right, if you're a lower KC communist in today's day and age, most likely you're not advocating for a return to the glory of the USSR. There are people who are, but those people, again, are a minority, and, and they're the ones we often fixate upon because we're all terminally online, right? Seems that, no, he actually is at this point principally devoted to the defense of capitalism. There were a lot of other things it feels like he's walked back on too. Positions and convictions that he used to have that no longer seem to be applicable. So that, that'd that be my concern. Yes, there's a justification for his ill uh, feelings towards lefties, but you can only take that so far before before you start doing the thing you hate them for, right? Like that shit with Lance and the, the, the Hamas donations thing like jesus you know yeah i don't know if you caught my coverage of your your video where you outlined those points but i i thought you did a really good job of laying out arguments and as somebody that uh is used to writing papers a lot and doing outlines like it was clear to me that like mm, okay this is and as you can probably tell i'm an egoist uh, i'm completely uh, an egotistical narcissist and if someone says one nice thing about me that's enough for me to do an entire segment where i will be like well uh, this individual had the right take. That's that's all it took. That's that's how shallow and hopeless I am. This is well thought out. You're not going to be able to poke holes in like 98% of this. Um, this is something that Steven needs to contend with. Like these are very clear problems, and he doesn't really have answers to them. It's. It, I mean, for me, it's not like the the only thing that I want at this point is to distance my content from his. 
obviously my content spawned from him and I don't care if there are people who watch me who want to watch him or whatever, they can do whatever they want. It's just like, at this point, I don't get the impression any conversations with him can ever like result in positive outcomes at all. They're always going to end up, and this isn't entirely like on him. Obviously, I don't like him very much. So at this point, it's going to I'm going to feed into this, but any conversations at this point are just going to turn into this incredible oh, hey, like by the way, um, only Facts TV. Uh, everyone should go check out. He was the one that got our amazing Elon Musk painting sold uh, for two hundred. Was it two hundred ETH or two hundred US dollars worth of ether? And we ended up planting three hundred trees. Am I getting the numbers right? I think three hundred trees. So give uh, give Only Facts TV a follow because uh, that was awesome. Once we knew the Germans were winning, we knew Hitler wanted revenge on the reparations they paid for World War II, so winning World War II would have been a way to avoid paying loans to American banks, and then the Allied powers who also borrowed from American banks would not be able to pay back. So a lot of World War II was about American interests, not some sort of humanity response to Pearl Harbor as we like to fantasize about. Wait, what? Are you saying history was a lie? Which even Pearl Harbor and the mythology around it befuddles me. Like, we had technically ex executed acts of war against Japan, steel and oil embargoes, and we consider that if they were done to us is an act of war. Japan sucks, but we also suck, and would like to clutch pearls and send young Americans to ultimately die for far-off lands, then, now, and in the future, probably. It's pathetic. Damn. Only Facts TV. You're, you're spouting only facts. Living living up to your, to your namesake, I see. Protracted community-wide battle. There are people in my community who like him, so criticism that he makes, that, that like it turns into this big fight between them and it lasts days and days and days. And oftentimes the conversations at their root are so misrepresented or so vacuous that it just feels like it's a waste. And I mean, I guess to substantiate that, I would point out like his Reddit, anytime anything with me happens. These people talk about me the way Kiwi farmers do. Christ, it's not just uncharitable. Some of this shit is like, borderline deranged as he banned all the lefties from his reddit so like with with all that like what do i get out of the conversations you know they're not fun my community can't grow from it because his community 100 percent of his community knows who i am there's almost complete saturation in that regard so we don't have fun we don't have community growth and we're also not furthering any of my ideological goals because his community is well i think it's as ideologically committed to capitalism as his is at this point and they did make one funny meme about me, though, so I'll give DGG credit, because I think someone posted it in my Reddit. I scroll through. <laughs> I mean, these are, these are, I'd, I'm wearing the same shirt. I could probably even make the same face. No, that wasn't even close. Damn. Little do they know my spine is twisted and evil. Higher eyebrows? True. Hey, do you, do you, do you like movies? Do you, do you like do you like surfs? Do you want do you want do you want movies and surf surfs watching the movies? So then come over to the new channels. It's the surfs. The cinema. Thanks so much for watching everybody. Can you do the thing, you know, that uh, thumbs up and comment and all those things that help us out in the algorithm that controls every aspect of our lives? Also, if you happen to have a Facebook account, um, can you can you delete it? Like just just delete it. You should probably delete your Facebook account because it's just it's not a great company. But hey, if you can't do that for whatever reason, I understand. And uh, could you also go to facebook.com slash the surf times then and uh, give us a little like and a follow. We're just trying to push back against the fact that people like Ben Shapiro happen to dominate the platform entirely. And when everyone asks, why do older generations believe the things they believe? One of the problems is the majority of them on social media use Facebook. So to counter that, uh, we're just going to be on there too now. Also, if you happen to have a union or a worker co-op or even a leftist project podcast website, Zoom, MySpace, it doesn't matter. We will advertise it for free on this channel. All you got to do is go to wearesurfs.com and use the forms that we got there, wearesurfs.com. Thanks, everybody. To our gods, Xander Corvus and VK Jehannam, we are prepared to commit human sacrifices for your eternal glory. 
to our monarchs, the Tim Caucus and Tom Spiker. We are humbled to be your oafish jesters, clowning around in your royal court. To our lords, Evan Nudy, Toe Fox, Ryan Lubin, Trevor R., Jeff Lamb, and Alexander Thaler, we shall proudly carry your standard onto the battlefield and die for your precious land. To our esteemed Knights of the Round Table, Dark Puppy, Jenna Tal, Anna Loves Riley, Quiet185, Omni, Riley and Anna, Poodlehawk, Multimondi, Trevor Janis, Lemmy101, Anthropophojack, Saren42, Chronic to Hemphog, The Great Poudini, Bone Genie, Catherine, Radical Maniac, Ramon Acosta, Jay Fraser Cartwright, Jimmy Big Nuts, Violent Orchard, Sophie Baby, Andreas Chiringuito, Zach Christensen, Yopi, Josh Mickelson, Todd Buckingham, and Todd Lajeunesse. We raise our glass, we raise our swords, and we salute you.